Welcome to Indiana Basketball Weekly on the Grueling Crew Sports Network. I'm your co-host, Mike Goodpaster. Right now, I want to welcome in my other two co-hosts. First up, member of the 1981 National Championship team, Steve Risley. How you doing, Steve? Doing great tonight. Getting ready to watch the World Series. Go Dodgers! Yeah, that'll be great. That's four and a half hours you can never get back and ten pitching changes in the seventh inning that you'll never be able to change. <laughs> There's no lie about that. I, you know, what, what has gone on with professional sports and things? That, I, I tried to watch an IU football game the other day. I don't even know who they lost to, uh, whoever they lost to last week. Iowa? Uh, I was like, huh? Iowa. Iowa. Okay, well, I'm like three hours into this thing. The game starts like at 9 o'clock out here or something like that. And it's like noon, and it's like eight minutes to go in the third quarter. I mean, how are we getting three hours into it? We're not even in the fourth quarter yet. Well, the worst we part is baseball. I turned it on last night in the seventh inning, and an hour later, I turned it off in the seventh inning. There was like four pitching changes in one inning, and I, I don't know. It, it just gets stupid. But let's go ahead and let's get to our other co-host. And sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. My, my, my apologies. Former Indiana basketball player, just <laughs> like Steve. Um, obviously, a lot better looking than Steve, Colin Hartman. How you doing, Colin? Yeah. I, hey, now, doing wait well, a minute. Now, well. Have you seen Colin's new profile page on Facebook? Girls, I'm telling you right now, if you're listening, you got to go check this guy out. I, I hate to tell you this, Steve, <laughs> but I don't stalk I Colin's Facebook page. Like you do. No, I got some notice that Colin Hartman has changed his Facebook page. Got him a nice, nice flat top kind of haircut. All crowd. Got him a nice muscle, black muscle shirt. Sitting out on his boat, oh. out by the, out on his lake, in the back of his parents' home. Looking all oh, dapper and dandy. And well, maybe Colin's going like, to be you know. one of those Amber Combrey and Fitch models. No, don't ever oh. speak that into the existence. Never. But I tell oh, you what, no. He looks good. Steve was a model for Field and Stream back in 1982. <laughs> I, was, I was a model for Frankenstein costumes. That's it. about it. I can see that. Yeah. That's what I was oh, going to say, it. but I didn't want to be too mean, so I just figured I'd go to Field and Stream way. Um, yeah, I moved out here. I moved out here to Hollywood thinking I could find me an acting job. And they, everything came up had a mask on it. You want to play Chewbacca? You know, you want to play the creature from the Black Lagoon? Too Lagoons? tall to be Chewbacca. You could be like no, uh, Chewbacca's like Chewbacca. Chewbacca's like tall. ten feet tall. He's oh, huge. is he? Yeah. Okay, I don't yeah. know about that stuff. I don't like Star Wars or whatever that is. Yeah. I don't like fantasy. I don't like fantasy football. Oh, I don't like science fiction movies. I don't like anything like that. But you're so boring. Uh, no, it's I just boring. It, I just don't son, think you should my, have a fantasy that doesn't have, include a half naked woman in it. My son's on the production <laughs> team doing the new. My son's on the production team is doing the new Star Wars uh, uh, television show. It's coming out for Disney Channel. It'll be the first show Disney Disney streaming shows live. Uh, they're doing a, a whole series now on Star Wars, and it's going to be like kind of a Netflix kind of thing where you're going to be able to download all the episodes at one time. He's on that production team. They're working on it right now. I still don't like that. That'd be sweet. But, all right. Yeah. Hey, in 1977, I went to the opening of the first Star Wars with my dad, and after 15 minutes, we got up and left because we thought it was stupid. Oh, my God. Wow. That's because I wasn't allowed to go see Saturday Night Fever because it was, like, R-rated, and my sister and my mom went to see Saturday Night Fever. So, just an interesting poor, tidbit that poor, nobody cares Poor Mike. About. I know, but do you know that I watched Saturday Night Fever and I realized, geez, this was maybe worse than Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. All right, before we get before we get started, Mike, what's what's the movie that had the most effect of you on you at all time? The movie that had the most effect on me at well, all just time. you should know it off the top of your head. I do, but actually, I saw a movie like a week ago that actually affected me. But when I was younger, it was Rocky. Okay, Colin. Uh, the the movie that affected my like mindset the most. This affected like you. my you life. Out. Yeah, you were different. Oh, the pursuit of happiness with uh, Will Smith. I don't even know what that's about. Pursuit of happiness. Well, that's you the one with uh, Will Smith. Isn't Will Smith. I just told you that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, it's come a great on, Steve. Movie. Pay attention to when Colin speaks. Um, <laughs> what movie? Affected you the most, Steve? Jaws. 
scared. The, I had a swimming <laughs> pool in our house. I would not even go into our swimming pool with the lights out. So he moved to California. Yeah, the light was <laughs> yeah but see, that's as I far away as you can home. get from Jaws because Jaws was in the Atlantic Ocean, and now Steve's in the Pacific yeah, Ocean. So. But nobody told Steve the that there's more shark attacks in the Pacific Ocean. I have been to Malibu Beach numerous times with my dogs on the beach, and I have not stepped six inches in that damn ocean. There are sharks out there. <laughs> so you're a they sissy. They just want to bite things. You're a sissy. Yeah. That movie, I walked out of that movie. I saw the very first episode ever shown in Indianapolis in 1974 when it first came out. We went to the matinee at 12 o'clock. And I swear to God, I walked out, and I did not swim in lakes forever. I did not anywhere lakes? to think of ever. I wanted to go to the ocean again. Well, you I know was what? I, I, I saw the movie at a drive-in when it first came out, and I was like seven years old. And every time I go to the ocean, I still go as far out as I can looking for a shark to fight. You know why? Because Rocky was the movie that affected me. Yeah, well, oh, that's all right. Goodness. Rocky's oh, a great movie. Gosh. All right, let's talk IU basketball. Let's talk some IU basketball, fellas. Okay, let's talk some IU <laughs> we got, basketball. We a week got games. from we got we finally after all this preseason, we got games coming up a week from tomorrow. They open up with an exhibition game against yeah. what SIU, Southern Colin, Indiana the University, which is Southern University is a, a decent program. Up. Yeah, they're a big step up from playing Marion at least. But my question is this. Um, does Coach Miller use this as a dry run for a real game where he prepares for it like it's a real game, Colin? Or is this something oh, yeah. where you're going into it as an exhibition and everybody's going to play a certain amount of time? Well, I think I think along the lines of speaking of the game, um, I think you kind of you play a little bit of everybody, um, mess around with your lineups a little bit, obviously. But in terms of preparation, everything stays the same. Um, in terms of the way you get ready for games, film sessions, the routines, um, and everything before the game, that all stays the same um, just because you have to build that habit um, within the team and within the guys um, that this is how we're going to do things. And when you walk into Cook Hall to get ready, get changed, um, and you walk through that tunnel, it's business. Whether we do the shoot-around before, which we always do, um, it's business during that, and it's quick in and out, break a sweat, get shots up, you know, run the floor a little bit um, and just get thinking about the game, run some run some offense, defense, out-of-bounds stuff, um, defensive schemes and stuff like that, just make sure we know I have the simple actions and the the most prevalent actions that the other teams run, whether it be their half-court offense or their out-of-bounds underneath, sidelines, um, just brief overview, um, recapping of, of what we've gone through in practice leading up to it and um, enacting what we see in film and just really um, honing in and, and and getting their minds right for, you know, the game because at the end of the day it's business. And especially playing at IU, you have a target on your back every single night. Um, I mean, to make, most, make no mistake, it will make SIU's history if, if they beat um, IU at, at, in Assembly Hall. So, um, make no mistake, they're going to come in to try to beat us no matter what. Yeah, um, I, the, yeah, example, yeah, try yeah I, the example of how, that how would that be the, Northern Kentucky University a few years ago went and beat West Virginia. That's 4NKU became a Division One program. Um, I want to ask Steve a question real quick. I don't remember too many preseason exhibition games with IU in the late 70s and early 80s, but if I remember right, on at least one of those occasions, you guys played the Russian national team, didn't you? Yeah, it's two things. First thing I want to do is, Colin, how was the, were you on the team? That, how was the bus ride home from Fort Wayne? <laughs> yeah, I didn't play in that game. That's right. why they lost. Okay, good. You were hurt. That's why they lost. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's we not why we up. lost. I, I think, that's not why I we think, lost. Um, <laughs> we opened up my my first game I ever played in at IU. I scored twenty six points, twenty four points, and we played the Russians. And I remember Ray Tolbert had eighteen. And I'm staring at this guy. It is seven foot four and uglier than I am. No, he which was. Which is hard to believe. <laughs> he was. That says a lot. Yeah, he was. He was not radio, ugly. but you're talking about. Are you it. talking about Arvidas Sabotas? No, 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 no. This oh, okay, because Sabotas was, was a lot better looking than you. Yeah, no, Sabotas is a stud. That guy, that guy, you know, he, he was a good looking guy compared to this guy. But I, I had to guard this guy seven foot four. 
And I got a great picture I'll put up on the website. I'll put up on grillingtruth.net uh, of him, me trying to get a shot off over him. It's hilarious. But I remember, yeah, we opened up. We always, night in our era, always took games as once we started playing, we were for real. There was no, you know, the, the, his lineup and, and mindset was set for the beginning of the season. It was then in your opportunity then to change it during the course of the, of the, of the preseason before you got into the Big Ten play. If you wanted to earn more minutes, you worked your butt off in practice and you proved to them when you're getting opportunities that you were worthy of more minutes. But we went into it as, as a real game. You opened up, like, I remember Russia. Remember, I had 24. Uh, I remember uh, uh, Ray had 18, and we got killed. So they killed us. And um, I, I remember sitting on the bus crying. It's, it's the first time. I mean, I was in tears because we lost that game. And I, I thought, man, I, this is, I just didn't expect to lose. I might die you. I didn't want to go through this. And, and it was really an emotional moment for me at that point in time. But I figured we lost the first We lost the first game I ever played in. I won the last game I ever played in. I liked the way it turned out. <laughs> All right. So how, how upset was Coach Knight? Because I know that the 1984 Olympic team was a big deal of him to beat the Russians. So, wh- wh- Yeah, I know. I tell back? you, he got on the bus and – Ray and I were sitting up front, and Ray and I, we were just, this is this is a, a new experience to us. I mean, we had never done anything like this before and played in front of 18,000 people like, uh, you know, and, and, and like that. And uh, uh, in the game, I believe, was actually played at Market Square Arena. I think we actually played them at Market Square, as I recall. I can't, I can't validate that 100%, but I seem to think that, yeah, well, it had to be because we got on the bus. So, yeah, so it had to be at Market Square Arena. And um, I remember we got on the bus and Ray and I were sitting up front and he saw me and I was literally crying. I mean, I literally was I was an 18 year old freshman and it meant the world to me to be playing at IU. And he gets on and he rips everybody into asshole except for Ray and I, because <laughs> nobody else did anything. I mean, and it, it's, it's my first experience of seeing Knight go deep into the dark world of Bob Knight. Of, of of negative reinforcement and motivation. So, so it wasn't a pleasant bus ride home, to say the least, but it it, it awoke me immediately uh, to what I was in for for the next four years. But, uh, yeah, he was none too pleased. He did not like to lose to the Russians, um, and he set the film for how things were going to be for a long time. So it was a great experience. Um, I'm glad I'm glad we did it. I think we actually played the Russians one more time at some point in time, but um, I, I got they used to we used to pass things back and forth, pins and flags to each other. I remember we had a little ceremony at the beginning. I think I got two sets of of uh, memorabilia from a Russian game, so I know I, some other time we played them again. Some of them was my sophomore year or what, but that kind of deal went out going out the window now with all the international basketball played and how much of it's played now. Yeah, it does. So you guys don't get the privilege of doing that. You know, playing Marion. Yeah, it does. That's for sure. <laughs> but as a player, is, is it hard to get up for that game? I mean, it's the first game of the year. You're playing at Assembly Hall, but it's an NAIA opponent. With Southern Indiana University, it's a D2 opponent. Is it hard to get up for that, or is it just you're so excited to get out there and play somebody else, it doesn't really matter who it is? Well, I think I think there's levels to it. Obviously, if you're a senior, you've kind of been through it a few um, I think that varies within the senior class. I think if you have a very good senior class and very good core group of guys that, that understand, you know, Indiana University and the target on our back, I think they're going to come in with the same mindset every single time. Um, but as a freshman, obviously, you're this is the first time you're stepping onto the court and playing somebody else. So if you're not jacked up to play, there's something wrong with you and you probably shouldn't be there. Um, but, yeah, if you have a core group of guys, uh, the older guys that have done it, you know, it's, it's not as exhilarating, you know, as the first time or if it's a packed crowd or anything like that. But um, you got to come up with your mindset right because, as we've seen too many times, it, it, a team that has no business, you know, statistically or on paper beating us, you know, worse things have happened. So um, it's just coming in mentally prepared and mentally ready because, it's it's no fun coming to that locker room and and losing to somebody who had theoretically no business being you. 
Hey, so. Colin, question for you. And I, I know the answer to this, but I'll, I'll go ahead and. Uh, <laughs> Steve knows uh, well, the because I to all the too. questions he's going to ask. No, 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 Everybody no, no. Well, you have to realize, Colin, I live. He's a great odds. The question is. What what is what is what is the day of the game like in, in Indiana? I mean, I know how it was with me. Take people through it, 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 the, what game day is like in Indiana. I mean, how much are, are you out of your normal routine? How much are you in your normal routine? Uh, what's the time frames of how everything happens on game day in Indiana? Well, you still go to class. Um, that's a you given. do obviously. Yeah, still go to class. Oh wow! <laughs> At least I did. Uh, we got a pass. And- Except for, like, you go to your morning classes, you really don't go to your afternoon classes. Classes normally, you, you don't go past, like, 11 or whatever, noon, depending on when the game is. Um, for our shoot-around, you get there for shoot-around, then you're done going to classes or whatever. Um, and then go to the game. Um, come, you got to get in the building at least an hour early, get taped, get stressed, get your mind right. Uh, always enter through Cook Hall, go through the tunnel, see Timmy G if you need to to get taped and everything. Um and then make your way down to uh, assembly, get up shots early if you want or whatever. But, yeah, we still go to class, at least I did, uh, in, in the mornings, um, just because you miss enough class when you're on the road that you still have to get that class in when you're there. Did you guys have a pregame meal? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pregame meal was right after shoot-around. So you do like the 45, 30, 45-minute shoot-around, whatever, maybe an hour. Um, grab lunch, um, grab the pregame meal or whatever, and then head down to Timmy G. Well, at least I did because I was always injured. Um, get a lot of extra treatment and whatnot before before you had to be back for the, for the game. Yeah, no. Did, did you guys did, did you guys just do pregame meal? Did you just do that cook or do you, like we went we yeah. went to a hotel actually. They they had a room set up for us. Well, we didn't have cook. Obviously, we just had a Sunday hall back in our days. We just we went to a hotel, and they had a right. meal set up for us in a hotel. And then we 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 would eat pregame, and then we would go out for a team walk, and then we were released to go home and expect to be back uh, at least an hour. To, but most everybody was there two hours before the game. Um, right. Shooting well, around we had, and things like that. With with Coach Miller, we started doing like in the mornings if you. Like it was early mornings, we would have, um, we'd have like an omelet station and whatnot at, at the at a hotel. Um, go over some quick film and then you know go do your mm-hmm. go do what you gotta do. And then we'd have um, pregame meal in the afternoon um, as well. Yeah. Just to make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, and eating right, and you know eating the right kind of things as well. So. Um, yeah, you either got at our at our pregame, you either got spaghetti or you got uh, eggs. Pancakes yep. and eggs. You got carbs. You got mostly carbs. They put you into right. the carbs for the most part. Um, and you did had you all guys stay in hotels the night before? No, we did not. No, we did not. Although there are many nights when I wish I did. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> my idiot drunk friends would come down to IU the night before and want to go to the game. I'd get them tickets, and oh, I'm like, man, I need to be in a hotel right now because it's three in the morning, and we got a game tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, we uh we did for like two years with Coach Green. We stayed we stayed in the hotel the night before. Yeah, we didn't uh, do that. I mean, yeah. we, we, we never didn't do did that, that with Coach Miller so. either. Um, but yeah, we, had to no, do we went home and got in our own environment, stayed in our own environment. Right. Okay. Like yeah. sleeping in your own bed is is very very <laughs> very beneficial uh, most of the time. I'm just surprised. It, it can be. Steve <laughs> had friends. Um, Steve, do you have any more questions? Because we do have some listener questions that were asked over the past oh, week nice. on thegrillingtruth.net on Twitter. So we can continue if you have more you want to say, or we can just round out the show with the five or six questions we have here. Hey, Kyle, how, how many pairs of shoes were you guys allotted during the season? Oh, gosh, I know you're going to bust me on this one. Um Whenever they broke, you went and got new ones. Or whenever they Jeez, you guys. You know, lost their grip, now we you gotta hear Steve, get new ones. Now we got to hear how oh, Steve had to wear the old grumpy old man. And his feet don't work anymore because the shoes were bad. Go ahead, <laughs> And then he had ahead, to walk, no, 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 he had to, walk no, to the no, games no. through three feet of snow and bare feet. Go ahead. <laughs> 
No, we, we, we didn't get preferential parking. We, we just got there early enough so we could find parking on our own. We didn't get that cook-off uh, <laughs> VIP parking for the players getting out. That is you know, nice. We that is very nice. We got, a, we got a little sticker to put in our window that said you don't have to pay to park, but you had to get there early enough to uh, park over by the utility trucks and everything like that that were there and hope the damn game wasn't televised by a major network. Because when they came in, they took up all the parking spots. And you were out there saying to yourself, and you were walking through snow, uh, trying to get to a, uh, trying trying to get to Assembly Hall because they hadn't cleared all the entire parking lots out yet, and so it was it wasn't wasn't the the pop of circumstance that you guys Indiana gets these days. And we got limited oh. shoes. I, I don't know that I ever got. I got a box that had maybe four or five pairs of shoes in it, and those had to last me the year. Now I never went through that many. I'm sure if I did, I probably would not be expected to go out and buy my own shoes. But uh, interesting. All right. Well, I only ever used two pairs of shoes really all season. I never like went through them. Went through them. Not like yeah, that. I changed that out about three. halfway through just just to get just because it got sweaty and you know when you play a lot, your shoes get worn out and sweaty. Yeah. So you kind of got when you have four hour practices a day as well. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we did. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. That was the norm. All right, yeah, Mike, what, what questions are we getting out there now that we need yeah. to answer for all, right. uh, all, all five people that listen to us? We always said <laughs> stupid questions. We're going to find out because everything anybody asks until it gets ridiculous and we get like 20 or 30 questions, we're going to ask. Um, the first question is Bob from Terre Haute who wants to know who you guys think will be the third scorer behind Morgan and Langford this season. Devontae. I, mean, Devontae. I, I think it has to be Devontae. I think the team needs it to be Devontae to a certain extent. I mean, you don't want him as the point guard come down and, you know, gunning, but he needs to be a threat. Um, we need a, a wing threat and a top a top guy that can, you know, play that point guard but also be a threat at the same time, take it off the bounce, push it in transition, score. You know, when you have a scoring threat like that, the, the defense has to respect it more, help more, make more decisions, and then you can burn them and you have more options. Um, but I think I think we also need a, a lot of scoring. I think we need to be so balanced it's 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 something that you can't guard. Like I said, I think we, we talked about last week, Steve and Mike, that um, we need to have five players in double digits on a regular basis um, because that's harder to guard than a guy getting 30. You know, so... I got to stop you here, Colin. When you talk about me and Steve together, it's supposed to be Mike and Steve. Um, all right, the next question. <laughs> this uh, one is, Steve. It, it hurts I've, Steve's I've feelings. My, but really, my, if you go got... in alphabetical order, I would be first. <laughs> here's, here's what I think to Bob's question. I, I think you've got to have at least two players who are going to be consistent scores for you that you can rely on every game. And right now we know that's going to be Morgan. We're making the assumption right now that it's going to be Langford. We really would like to see Devontae and, and Langford be consistent scores, but still for Indiana to get to the next tier, they're ah. going to have to have somebody that elevates every game. Now that's when you go to your depth and you've always got one player, a McRoberts, or a fantasy, or Justin Smith. somebody else, uh, yeah, uh, Durham, or somebody that steps up and puts big numbers on the board. And, and you don't necessarily rely on those players every game, but you expect one of those guys to step up and, and to make things happen. But if you, do, if you just rely on two people to score, and, and even if you rely, you know, three gets a little more difficult, but two people makes yourself pretty easy to defend. Um, mm -hmm. If you can just shut one of the two people down, you become very defensible. Um, so it's incumbent upon the guys at IU to understand everybody had, and this column, this is what I, 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 in watching all the games last year, I used to get so frustrated with you. You would run through the lane and you would cut, you, you're one of the best cutters I've ever seen play other than Alford in terms of getting yourself in position and you cut through and, and half the time you wouldn't even look at the basket. And I don't know if that's a mindset that was put into your head or what, but I'm like, Colin, turn and shoot. You're 12 feet in the ball. I've coached you since seventh grade. I know what you can do with the ball <laughs> 12 feet in, turn and shoot. And right. you've got to get that mindset that every time you get in a position, a range of 12 feet, your first option is I have to look at the basket. 
And I, I've got to see what are, do I have an option to take it to the hole or do I have a clear jump shot from 12 feet? And there was just, you know, and every player has got to get that mindset in their head. And, and that's something Knight didn't do a very good job because I was as guilty as that as anybody. I, I never looked for shots. I mean, of the 500 points I scored in college, most of them were rebound put back in. I mean, I'll bet you I didn't hit 20, 30, 40, 50 jump shots the entire, my entire career where I didn't take them. But that, that was a mindset of how Knight, you know, labeled everybody as I was a defensive player and a screener. And that was my role and responsibility on that basketball team was not to be a scorer. If I got outside my role and responsibility, my playing time was going to diminish. So I think Miller, <laughs> the game has changed dramatically enough now that everybody on that court has to look to be a scorer. We have to have consistent scores. And we've got to have opportunistic scores. And everybody that's on the floor has to be an opportunistic score all the time. And, you know, that's just my two, this is my two cents worth. All Agreed. right. Next question is from Lexington, Kentucky, from Terry, spelled with an I at the end. Um, Terry wants to know, Colin, if you had to go on the floor with any five Hoosiers on the current roster, in crunch time, in a big situation, who would be the five you would trust mm. the most to put out there right now? Ooh. Um, including myself or or me Colin, just you, you being a coach and putting last five year, out there? So I think it's the five that are on the team <laughs> right now. <laughs> I want to be in there. Um, well, I don't know. The question said if you have to go on the floor with any five. Or, no, you know, well, if you had to put any five on the court from this current team. Who, what would be All the right. five you would put on there? Oh, man. Sheesh. Um, I have, obviously, Juwan, uh, Romeo, um, Devontae, Zach, and that fifth one is, is – is, that's a tough one. You can either go small with it or you can go athletic. Um, I may go Justin Smith. Um for, for another big body and pure athleticism. Um, yeah, I, I like that lineup. We're, the thing is, we're so we're so deep, and there's so many different lineup combinations that we can have. Um, I think it's going to be difficult, and, and it's going to be easy and difficult at the same time for Coach Miller just because you have all the options, but at the same time, you have so many options, and you're so deep. Um, I think the adequately answer that question i would have to watch a couple practices um to see how guys have changed and see how guys play together and to see who steps up but i think for right now i would stick with those five all right so we'll just do this then we'll, we'll just take the last guy you put in and we'll put you in it then you can go ahead and play um <laughs> yay me <laughs> um, and, and i think this just to throw this in before we get our next question i think justin smith is going to be a huge part of this team's success this year and he's a guy we really oh, haven't right. talked a whole lot about yet colin i agree justin smith race thompson i mean evan fitzner um we're it's, it's crazy how deep we are and people don't realize it um just because obviously race didn't have his uh, any opportunity he redshirted last year he's going to be a great asset to the team Justin started to blossom halfway through the season last year um, and is really going to pick up his game this year, really been working on his shot. Um, still a freak athlete. Um, I mean, the heat, those two are, are, are guys that we really haven't really haven't talked a lot about. Um, and I'm super, super excited to, to see them play um, and see how they mess with the team and how much they've grown over the summer Just because that's a lot of time to, to change your game. All right, next up, we've got a question from Rick in Aurora, Indiana, and it's for Steve, and he wants to know if Steve still has nightmares about losing a 1977 semi-state to a small school, <sighs> the Aurora Red Devils. I've never, had nightmares. I've, never, I've never had nightmares about that game. They all played us, Rick, and we've had this conversation uh, on Facebook time and time again, Rick. Why Rick do you, didn't I mean, even ask the question. I heart? brought it up because I didn't want to oh, leave they, you out, and I always like to bring it up because – I could tell it. <laughs> you Even though you say that's it doesn't, NBA, it bothers single, you. That's what single class so in basketball. I, you can hear no, it I'm in the bitter. voice. Go ahead. You poked the I'm bear, Mike. <laughs> it, it, no, we got outplayed that day. We got outplayed by a team that wanted it worse than we did, and, and they made fewer mistakes, 
They executed well above their level of expectation to execute, and and we didn't. And they outplayed us. And that's what single class basketball in Indiana used to be all about. And Colin, I don't think you were even around for single class basketball. Were you? It was gone by now. No, I wish I was. No, it ended yeah. in no, yeah. it was cool, yeah. seven, I believe. You missed it. I, I mean, it was so born. fun, and I have no bitterness about losing that game. I mean, it was heartbreaking to lose because. We had a team good enough to be in the Final Four that year, and but we didn't get there, and we didn't get there by our own fault, not by the fact that, that we just didn't play hard enough, and, and they, they rose to the occasion. They beat us. They flat out, Aurora High School and Tim Johnson just beat us. And on single, and elimination, single elimination basketball, that can happen to you on any given Saturday afternoon. All right. Mike, I out. cannot believe you made that up to get him riled up, man. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> That's your fault, Mike. <laughs> you didn't um, me up. It's fun to do. <laughs> you riled up. I could have, you know, ruffled. Rick is a friend of both of ours who played on that team, so I could have got him to ask a question without a problem, but I just figured it'd be fun. <laughs> I, ha- I haven't, you know, as you said, poked a bear in a while, so I figured why not do it. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, this is for both of you. This is from Eric who is in Cincinnati, Ohio, said he is a Hoosier grad, 2006. He said, how should the coaching awesome. staff define success this season? Go Steve? ahead, Steve. How should they define success? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, there's multiple ways. Keeping everybody healthy, uh, improving upon what you did last year, getting more people to understand Miller's system, um, getting more people to understand, uh, strengthen his recruiting class coming into the next year. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to go on a limb and just say, I think anything less than a sweet 16 for this team is going to be a disappointing season. I, I think it's, it's going to be a disappointing season for them if they don't make the sweet 16 this year. I think this team has a good enough coach. I think they have good enough talent. Um, the, the $10 question is, is can they marry those two things together? And I, but I, I, I was as a former player, a fan, an alumni. I'll be disappointed if we don't make the Sweet Sixteen this year. All right, I think Colin. that's a great target for this basketball team. Colin, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think, I think they. I, why not set the bar at winning the Big Ten? I don't think that there's any reason yeah, that we winning should win the Big, Big Ten. Ten. I don't think that there's any well, reason I we should. Like I don't. See. I, Colin, what? I'd like to see Indiana finally win the damn Big Ten tournament. Tournament? Yeah. I they hate never, that thing, by it. the way. I hate the tournament. Yeah, and I what's the, the point of tournament. winning it? Look at all the teams that win national championships uh, that a couple weeks before are losing in the conference tournament. And I think a lot of times it's better to lose on a Friday in the conference tournament and have a week ready to get ready for the tournament, the NCAA tournament, than it is to win the Big Ten tournament. Because if you win the Big Ten tournament, you're playing, what, three, possibly four games over a weekend? Yeah. Then you may have to line back up and play on Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday. I mean, I, I just don't right, see the we, benefit of winning it. We, at the end of the day, I think that they have to, I think that they have to win. I, I mean, I value, I value the, the regular season term just because you're playing on the road, home and away, blah, blah, blah. It's a longer, you know, trials and tribulations. You can't just get hot and win it. Um, so I value I value the regular season Big Ten championship. I always have. I hate the Big Ten tournament just because I may be a little biased. I, I mean, I broke my wrist the year we went to Sweet 16. I broke my wrist in the Big Ten tournament and had to play with it. Um, I just think it's stupid um, for the Power Fives to play. Um, you know, obviously for the little schools, it gives them the opportunity to get in um, to the tournament and stuff like that, but and the power fives, you're either good or you're not at this point. You know, winning winning the tournament and getting into the tournament doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, do very well. But back back to his question, it's I think they have to win one of the Big Ten, you know, titles, and then I think Sweet Sixteen is a very very doable thing this year. All right. Um... Well, Steve, you got anything else? Because I'm out of questions. Because there's two other ones here, but they're all kind yeah, of no, similar. Yeah, no. In, in to light of what you said, in light of what you said, there's multiple reasons why you want to win the Big Ten tournament. First off, the number one reason why it's there, and we haven't won. Oh yeah, it, it's there, and we we have not put our name on that trophy yet in, in the inception of that silly thing. 
And that, how long has the Big Ten tournament been around? 10, 12, 13 years? I, long time. Too long. Look it up. Look it up real quick, Mike. You're, you're, you got a fast computer. I don't have computer. to look it up. I don't have a fast computer. <laughs> okay, hold on. I got to type. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. That's, that's the number well, one Well, don't tell me it doesn't matter when you tell me to look it up. I'm in the middle of looking it up, and then you tell me it doesn't matter. I mean, well, I get tired of treating well, me like this, Steve. Just because you played for Bobby Knight and you got a ring doesn't mean you're any better than me. Regardless, we are O for everything in the Big Ten tournament. That's reason enough for want to go win the damn thing. Um, it, it, it's a great showcase for your team for that, that three-day period of time, four-day period of time. Um, anything worth playing is worth winning. If you're going to go play the damn thing, win the damn thing. All right. If that's not your goal to win it every year, your goal should be to win the Big Ten tournament every year. Nineteen ninety. And I, I do put more va- I do put more value on the regular season champion because I think it's a grind for, for now twenty games. Now it's a twenty game Big Ten schedule, so that, that's a grind. And, and to come out on top on that is, but the tournament is is what gives you the automatic bid. You are the creme de la creme, the, the number one seed when you come out with the Big Ten championship tournament championship by NCAA's vision. And we know their vision is often very cloudy. So the other <laughs> thing I think it, the other thing that was pretty good, wasn't it, Colin? Yeah, I liked it, it, it Steve. Great, I liked Steve. it. Yes. The other the other thing it does is it, it puts you in a mindset of going into the tournament of, of how to play back to back games, play life and death one and done games. You got to go into it, and it's a great prep, preparation for the tournament and the one and done mentality and philosophy, which I think kills more teams. Each year, yeah. it killed Virginia. Virginia was so looking past University of Maryland, Baltimore County. They didn't even, those players in that team didn't even, they thought they were playing an intramural team. And they looked so past them. And that, that it kills more teams every year because they cannot get into a one-and-done mentality and, and prepare themselves for the tournament and get ready. And I think you take that tournament so seriously – and you want to come out of there with momentum, with winning, with showing dominance with your team, put the fear of it in God and everybody else, like uh, Indiana's rolling. They came through. They, they drilled through the Big Ten tournament. I, I mean, look what it did for Michigan. But it did. You know, it, yeah. They lost. Well, they made a big run. They were also in the Final Four. Yeah, but I, I'm sorry. When you look at this, 2017, the national champion was North Carolina. They lost in the ACC semifinals. Villanova the year before lost in the Big East semifinals. Duke the year before that won in the lost in the ACC semifinals. UConn the year before that lost in the AAC semifinals. Um, Louisville did win the Big East in 2013. 2012 Kentucky lost. If you go back 25 years, well, never won the last six years. No national champions have won their conference tournament. And over the last 25 years, only 10 out of 25 did. So I don't think it's that big a deal. I hate it. All right. It's like I said, it's for the little schools that, you know, they they need their bids. Obviously, it's fun. You know, they, they and, and, when, and, and, like when, and when when a ranked team and when a ranked team starts playing in the tournament, who do they play first? They play the little schools. They play the little schools. So why not get some practice in a preparation and play play the Wisconsin or the Northwesterns, the the whoever else is bad in the Big Ten? Which looks like to me about most everybody this year. And, and go ahead and learn to play those teams, learn to take those teams seriously. I see nothing but positive with the Big Ten tournament. Well, what, I see what it about because you are you are looking at it wrong. You're not looking at it as an opportunity to prepare. No, remember, remember, not. guys, and it's more of an opportunity guys, to prepare in the Big Ten now than it used to be. But at the end of the day, Steve, you're going to play, play you're going to well, and you're going to play all those little teams throughout the season, anyways. It doesn't matter. The only thing I could see getting out of the Big Ten tournament you're not, you're is the quick turnaround of game. Situation. You're not. Man, you're, you if, somebody... if you are Indiana this year and you go into the Big Ten tournament as the number one seed and you're twenty eight and two, the only thing it can do is hurt you. I mean, and, and you can't sit you there can and tell get me it's one and hurt. done. You can... Yeah, because if you're Indiana in the first round, you're playing Northwestern, it's not one and done for you because you're going to play the next week. It's one and done for Man, Northwestern. That is, such, that is such a defeatist attitude. It's I, not I a defeatist attitude. It's a, 
stupid. It's a fetus attitude, Mike. Yeah. And I'm a if coach I, if I'm that smarter, not harder. Me, hey, if you Google me, I'm a coach that also has won 80% of every game I've ever coached. So I don't even want to hear that. You know what you're sounding like right now? <laughs> you're sounding like the penguin in the episode of Batman. You're I don't the one watch Batman. Batman and Robin I don't watch little kids you're shows one, like some people. You're oh, the come one on, guys. Because I'm preparing let, to let win finish. while you're watching Batman. You know, you're, you're the one who ties Batman to the pole and puts a bomb in their hands and puts a 30-minute fuse on it so they can use their utility belts to escape. No, because you know what if I would I'm do? 20, that's dude, what you do. That's tournament. what the conference tournaments are, Steve. That's 30 minutes. you got a chance everybody. to get away. What I would do is this. If I tied him to a pole, I'd just slit his throat and it'd be done. Uh-huh. I, I see really the Big Ten true. tournament as a good thing. I, I don't think that it's the true measure of the champion of the Big Ten. But I see it as a great opportunity to well, prepare wait a second. for the, for the if, big dance. If it's not a true champion, why would you give a damn if you win it or not? If you've already won the regular <laughs> season Big Ten tournament, why and you've do you play the game? Twenty Big Ten games, you've already declared. You already know you're the best team. If I'm Indiana this year and I go 18 and two in the Big Ten and Purdue second, and they're four games behind me, there ain't a damn thing Purdue can do in a conference tournament to convince me that they're better than me. Because the other thing is, I'm going to go in as a number one seed either way. And as Colin said, yep. in those three games, I could get somebody hurt. You know, I mean, we, we could all of a sudden, I mean, just bad things happen. Yeah. There's nothing, there, put it like this. You always say preparation is more important than well, whatever the crap you say all the time. And I believe that. <laughs> and the thing is this, the way I would prepare for that, if I'm the number one seed, I'd play my bottom five guys and prepare them to play in case we needed them in the tournament because I'm not going to risk my really good players. That's like saying NFL teams that don't play their best players in the fourth preseason game are not preparing to win. That's a difference in philosophy, guys. I, it's a I, meaningless I, as, game, as, as Steve. A, it, they're not meaningless. Well, they're, meaning, they're meaningless games from your perspective. From my perspective of, of understanding how Coach Knight coached the game and how preparation was the number one thing Coach for him. Coach Knight hated they, conference they would be, tournaments. He did hate conference tournaments. But I guarantee you, had he had a team in the 70s, he would have dominated them. 70s and 80s, he would have dominated well, them. they had the best team. He just never got the talent that again. That makes sense. So, but it, it, I see the big, I see these conference tournaments now. I've changed my thought process on them. I hated them too a few years ago because I did not like the fact that they anointed the number one seed to the conference champion when it could be anybody that just gets hot for three games. Huh? But they give a number I'm, one seed if to a I'm, conference if, champion. If I'm 20, they always give, yeah, the automatic bid. No, they don't. The automatic bid goes to the conference champion. Well, yeah, one seed, but I they don't it. give you a number one seed. No, you're right. I stand corrected. They give you the automatic bid. Again. I think that Indiana should go into the Big Ten tournament with every every ounce of energy focused on winning it. See, my, my difference in philosophies is this. If I'm coaching a team at the start of the year, the only thing I care about is winning the championship at the end of the year. I don't care about anything else in between. I'm preparing my team that when they get in the NCAA tournament to win that championship. I don't give two craps about a Big Ten tournament. I just don't. I want my team okay. to get better as the year goes on. I want my team to peak in the NCAA championship game because in the end, if you win the Big Ten championship and you get beat the second round of the tournament or the first round of the tournament, that season is a complete failure. I agree. Um, I don't agree. Okay, so in the <laughs> end – you don't think that the ultimate goal is win a national championship. Because I'm sitting here, and if I'm coaching a team, yeah, winning a conference tournament's a big deal. But I want to win a national championship. Because in the end, who cares if you win a conference championship if you get beaten a tournament? The only thing that matters in life, and this is one of the greatest public speakers I've ever seen said this. And I know you've heard this before. Both of you have. If you ain't first, you're last. You're last. Hey. And I know Steve loves NASCAR. There it is. I just made a NASCAR reference in a grueling truth show, which I swore I would never do. <laughs> but I don't think there's anything truer. If you ain't first. I mean, did Michigan win the Big Ten tournament last year? 
Good time. I thought they did, didn't Nobody they? Nobody cares. Okay. Nobody there, ever, there, nobody ever right remembers there, second right there. In the I tournament. win. There you go. Steve, you're the one preaching this. We watched the Big Ten tournament, and the only thing we remember is they got their ass kicked in the national look championship game. Look it up. Look it game. up. I believe, I believe See, Michigan's won the Big Ten tournament. But this is my point. I, this is did. my point, Steve. It doesn't matter. The All fact right. that I would have to look up something that happened five months ago tells you it doesn't matter who won it. But we all know Villanova beat Michigan's ass in the national championship game because in the end, that's right. the only thing people remember. I know. Okay. All right. I'm, I, I refuse to argue with imbeciles, so I'm done. <laughs> you, well, your problem is this. You refuse to argue when it's a lost cause. Because no, the other I, two I, I, just, too I, I want a team that want, I want a team that wants to go in and win everything they they are playing for. If okay. you're playing, you might as well play to win. Don't play not to lose. Oh, I agree. Don't too. make up some excuse but going to bench like evil. This. So if I'm going to the Big Ten tournament, it, it's there, it's in front of you. So go into the mentality of I'm going to win the damn thing. Oh, that's All right. Because I want to win everything. I that's don't want to lose. Period. No, I neither do I. I and I'm still going to try to win it. So. But it's still stupid, and it still doesn't matter in the end. Nobody cares. Okay. I mean, I can't tell you. There, there, there is legitimacy to your statement in, in one facet in terms of the importance, relative importance to the game itself. But in terms of preparation, you're, you're off base. I'm not off base. Okay. Because I'm still going to prepare to win. But I, I'm telling you this. If my team is the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament, it's not one and done. It's not the same thing. Colin, you played on a team, went to the Sweet 16. You played the Big Ten tournament. You went into it. Not as a one-and-done team. You knew that because you knew you were going to play later on, correct? So the pressure is not correct. the same as last year where you go into the Big tournament, to Big Ten tournament and you know if we lose, our season's over. Right. So the thing is that you don't it, – it's a combination of both. I mean, at the end of the day, you don't go in to lose anything ever. It's just no. not the way – I mean, our preparation never changed. It's like we go in to win because we're there, we might as well do it. But at the end of the, day, the overall concept that I think that we're seeing different on from Steve is we all agree that if you're going to play it, you might as well play to win. But at the end of the day, what we're what Mike and I are saying is that the Big Ten tournament as a whole, uh, we don't like it. But since it is a thing, like obviously go try to win it because you're there anyways. Um, yeah. But I just think I don't I don't like the concept of the Big Ten tournament because it is not it's uh, for all the reasons that we've stated before just because. Yeah. Well, I, I like it in this point. I like the fact that a team like Penn State or Nebraska last year, who was a bubble team, had a chance to play their way in. I'm just saying, if I'm a team that knows I'm in, I hate that tournament. And I think when you look at the fact that only 11 of the last 25 teams that won a national championship won a conference championship, will tell you, number one, I think the reason the majority don't win the conference championship is they're probably playing against teams that are playing for their lives. Yep. And when you win that conference championship, I mean, it's a lot of cases you've kind of shot your, you kind of shot everything out right there. I mean, because how many times Michigan was an exception <clears throat> last year where they did win the Big Ten championship turn, or tournament, and then they went on and carried that on. But more often than not, we see teams that'll go in and get hot, and then everybody picks them to be the upset team to get to the Sweet 16, and they come out in the first round and shoot 25 percent and get blown out. But, and I'm really sorry that Steve thinks Colin and I are imbeciles. <laughs> I didn't say, that wouldn't I, be I the first time Colin. Steve could call me an, Yeah, you did. You said imbecile. you don't like arguing with imbeciles. And since me and the other imbecile here agreed, you would be talking about <laughs> Colin, us, Steve. Colin, you don't remember the one time in the tournament we played at the field house where you, you missed three three-pointers in a row and I pulled you out and called you an imbecile? <laughs> you don't remember that? I well, that you got to – well, you got to bring up the dark times, Steve. You got to bring up. You got to bring up the dark times, don't you? Bad that's memories. That's Steve is. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that when person. your mom came over, sat on the bench with you, and brought you? A, never, a never, not dinner. once, never, not once. You, I am not letting you, you slide with that. In a, in, a, in, a, in a hot dog. Well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, He's hungry. right. And you got to stay hydrated to play yeah. the game, Steve. You obviously probably <laughs> you probably coached a team where you made the kids bring their own drinks. That's the problem. 
Yeah. Yeah. What am I? What am I? The Bank of China? Jesus. Most of the kids I coach were far I don't know. Where did China come out of? Where, yeah. where did the China only come thing into I this? I know is this. If, if you're the, uh, I mean, come on, you work for Pfizer, so I'm sure. Yeah, you were doing all right. You, they were paying you at least $9 yeah. an hour. At least. <laughs> at least. At <laughs> least. I mean, you got to afford well, all the dog Colin. food. And are your dogs once all we, right? Because we, they haven't barked all right, during we're done. We're done. I think the Big Ten. I think that there's a purpose for the Big Ten tournament, not necessarily in, in proving how much hair you have on your chest or flexing your muscles or anything. I think it's, a, it's an opportunity for great teams to prepare and go into a preparation mode to tweak things, to get into a different mindset than where you have a Big Ten tournament or regular season where you can play, you can lose a game, you can say, well, we got to win the next three now. we got to do this. We can strategize. We, we have breathing. When you get into a Big Ten tournament, it's your first real test before going into the dance where you have no breathing room, one and done. So why not take it as an opportunity to prepare your team for one and done mentality? Maybe the problem is most coaches don't go into it with that mentality. They go into it with the mentality of they want to win the tournament. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's, it's, it's irrelevant if they don't win the tournament because they're going to the dance anyway. Exactly what you just said. I'm telling you, change your mentality for the Big Ten tournament. Like this is a three game opportunity for me to prepare my team to understand the nature of the beast, and we've all said it. Colin, you said it. Mike, you said it. How different one and done sports is than league yeah. play. And, and Steve, I think and that's what that a is. great opportunity to step up for three days, test your team's stamina, test your team's durability, test your team's ability to change their thought process on a short nerves, and go into it and say, "Okay, I'm going to look at this as a preparation time, and I, I'm going to do this with this mentality. I need all three games." The, the, the more I, I, I – okay, and you go back, let's make one more analogy in NASCAR. I sit there and watch these guys in NASCAR, and I'll take practices all the time. And these guys are out there running – they run a 200-lap race. On an hour-and-a-half practice, they run 112, 20 laps in practice. I mean, why are you running 120 laps in practice? You're wearing it – you're tearing up your car. You're stressing yourself. You're exhausting yourself. And, but yet there's a purpose to it because they're working on things. They're preparing for – Enter into corners, exit out of corners, short shoots, long shoots, uh, coefficient drags. There's a whole mentality to doing what they're doing, even though they're putting the time in. So if you're going to go to a Big Ten tournament, don't go into it with the mentality of, I have to, there's teams that have to win it. If they want to continue their season, like Indiana's had to do most of the time, you're going to continue your season, you've got to win the Big Ten tournament. So the way you're going to continue your season. So there, there's that fear. So you've got teams that are playing with that bullseye on your back, it's not on their back. But if you're Indiana at 28 and two going into it, I'm going into it with the mentality is this is prep time for me, baby. This is this is this is a great controlled scrimmage practice for the next three days on how to All change right. the mentality and philosophy so of my basketball. What team. you just and said I'm is the Big Ten tournament is a great controlled controlled scrimmage. Colin, any final words? For some teams, it is. For some teams, it is a great controlled scrimmage. Okay, Colin, any final words? Heck no. Heck no. All right. Heck we no. Um, Steve, anything you want to wrap up with? Um, no. Okay. All right, guys. Remember, <laughs> if you want to. I can't, I can't talk anymore. I can't talk anymore that you two gentlemen would understand. Okay. <laughs> we understand Whatever. your thought process. Yeah. Steve. And I'll tell you, the Big Ten tournament now. Since they moved it up a week, I've got no problem with playing it like that. My problem is if I've got a high-performing team that's ranked number one or two in the country, I really would rather not be playing on Sunday if i got to play on Thursday. But that's just me. Um, I would still play it to win. I just don't like the idea. Um, if you Jesus, want to... man. Are what? you kidding Let's me? Let's move on. Come on, no. We're going to open gonna, it up I, to people on Facebook. I, I, we're going to allow people to talk yes. into it. And, and you can and ask questions and... Ask questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, whatever. If you agree with we Steve... We want to hear what everybody's got to say. I, I want to see everybody that agrees with Steve post something in agreement with Steve. And my guess is there'll be few. Um, all right, guys. <laughs> you can follow us on thegruelingtruth.net. You can tweet us at gruelingtruth. Also, at Indiana Basketball Weekly on Twitter, Steve? Uh, Grueling 
uh, Grueling, Grueling Hoops. Truth, Indiana Hoops. Grueling, Grueling Truth, Truth, Indiana, Indiana Hoops. Hoops. All right. Either one of those, you can send a question through. You can send a question through our Facebook page, The Grueling Truth. You can hear all of our shows on iHeartRadio, iTunes, TuneIn, Spreaker, Spotify, wherever you find sports podcasts, you'll find The Grueling Truth. So for Colin Hart. Hey, Mike. Mike, what, Mike, what, what, if what, they want to ask what. a really intelligent question, want a really intelligent answer, they can just tweet me at srizzly34. I'll give them an intelligent answer. <laughs> Are you, who, 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 who's going to answer for you, your wife? <laughs> Tia's got this one covered. <laughs> She's pretty intelligent. I guarantee you. She is. Tia, Tia is on the Twitter page, and yeah, I think Tia is very intelligent. I just wonder why the She's the looks and the brain. <laughs> Oh, God. Hey, it's the love. same thing. It's the same thing I wonder about my wife. So, and also, ladies, go check out Colin Hartman's Facebook page. All Definitely right, guys. <laughs> so, Facebook for Colin profile. Hartman, Steve Risley, I'm Mike Goodpass. You've been listening to the Grueling Truth, where the legends.